Um, I think we have time for, for some questions here before we break for, for the gala dinner. Uh, and I think if I, if I may just conclude uh, very shortly that uh, after hearing my, my colleagues here, I, I think we can conclude that it is possible uh, to earn money even if you are uh, clean and safe. Uh, but it is a big challenge. I, I appreciate completely what you say. I have my own ship owners in, in Denmark, it's the same uh, story. And, and it is a fantastic challenge. And I think uh, we should concentrate our work here in the, the PA SAFE uh, on trying to solve these uh, fantastic problems for, for the ship owners so that they can still um, earn money and uh, be safe and, and clean because that's what they really want. If I understand you correctly, but it's a, it's a big, big challenge. And I will now open the floor to, to questions, if anybody has a question. Uh, could I... Uh, yeah. I want to discuss this uh, topic. Can clean and safe bolted shipping make money? It shouldn't be, can dirty and unsafe bolted shipping make money? Yeah, that, that's a good way to, to turn it. Uh, <laughs> We believe strongly in quality shipping, so I agree with you. It's the only way, but it is still a challenge. If you have no questions, I, 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 I I'm, yeah. Can you share? Yeah. Well, uh, I'm from Estonia. I'm here with the Baltic University program. My name is Gustav Dostov, and I have uh, a few questions. So we know that the technology is slowly uh, rising. So. Uh, ships that were built 20 years ago pollute uh, the environment a lot more than the newer ships, right? And in the future we strive to go for more uh, environmental friendly technologies. So for example, uh, today some company wants to buy a new ship, for example, I know, Talink maybe, or Viking Line. And so now the question is, is the new technology more expensive than the old technology. So if they, they, they build a new ship with the old technology for them, it, is it, it will be cheaper? This is the first question. Uh, for the moment, uh, the, the price is slightly higher for, for uh, LNG. For new Yeah, technology. because of these uh, LNG tanks are quite expensive. Basically. Okay, so maybe you think that there should not, not be a possibility to refuse, for example, I am the I, I am the owner of some uh, company, right? I want to build a ship, but there is no possibility for me to build older ships. I can only go forward, even it will be more expensive. Just but this is my only option mm -hmm. to build these types of ships. Maybe even if they will be slower, if the policy will be there like from governments, they will just refuse to um, allow me to build older ships that will pollute the uh, environment. But uh, the it's not possible to, to run a, uh, that kind of ship in, in the Baltic after 2015. You have to do something. Well, only the newer ships. There is no old technology. It's, uh, even you can build new ships with old technology. Well, I, I mean the, the technology that pollutes the uh, environment more. No, you, you have the sulfur directive 0 0.1. Okay. You have to go under that. Uh, you have some so there is no explanation so to, to, to refuse. No, uh, no, we I, have no chance to postpone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, no, it will be 2015 and, and it's a regulation. But what you're talking about is, is very complicated because if you want to do uh, regulations like that, you have to pass through the IMO and all the countries need to agree on, on these regulations. It's very, very difficult and often it takes many, many, many years before you have uh, these kind of, of regulations. So. It has, the, the countries have taken another way. They have made regulations for the uh, environment uh, things, and from 2015, you're not allowed to uh, put sulfur into the air more than 0.1%. Yeah. If there will be only one door to yeah. go towards the new technology, I even if the ships will be slower, even if it will be more expensive, but there is no possibility for uh, companies to, to build cheaper ships. I understand completely, them. yes, yes. Yes. They still will go forward. Yeah, so. if, if you were not allowed to build. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah, Finn. Yeah, uh, my name is uh, Finn Larsen. I'm from uh, Denmark, actually from the Danish Navy. 
Um, I got a question about the uh, clean uh, shipping index uh, because I think it sounds like a brilliant program that you can sell to every ship owner and the shipping company. Uh, you mentioned a couple of times that there were uh, cargo owners involved in the uh, program. Now, is there also equally many cargo uh, ship owners into the program? Because I think you need both, and you need the same amount of both to get this index uh, really off the road and working. And my second question would be, if you uh, sell this, uh, this program to all these shipping companies, what do you think the chances are that a cargo owner will actually choose a, a, a ship which I expect will be slightly more expensive to go from A to B um, than, in, in my experience, uh, normally what you go for is the cheapest transportation possible every time, or it goes low to you or any of the other good solutions. Thank yeah, thank you. Uh, two really, really good questions. Uh, start with the first one. Uh, I agree. You have to have uh, both parties uh, present in order to, to do something. Uh, currently, in the clean shipping network, we have uh, 32 cargo owners who, who use the index. So they're part of, of a network and they use the data and they sign a letter of intent stating that they really use it in their procurement process. And we have, uh, I think it's 50 ship owners currently reporting into the database. So it's 50 ship owners uh, connected to, uh, to 32 uh, cargo owners to, to answer that question. Um, it is so in our scheme, the cargo owners, they do the decision making. So they are really in the, in the driver's seat. They really ask, they require <coughs> from the ship owners to report data into the index. And if they get this question by a network of 32 major customers, generally they, they don't decline uh, that request. So that's that's how, uh, how that works. Um, yes, but th there's interaction between, uh, between the two. Um, about the pricing, um, yeah, of course, this is an individual decision by individual cargo owners in the network. Are, am I going to choose one ship owner over the other, uh, even if it's a bit more costly? I know for sure that there are some cargo owners who, who do this, they, they, they look of course, pricing, reliability, lead time are all the most important uh, uh, drivers for decision making. But the uh, fact is that environment is, is becoming one of those. Uh, so if you look, uh, sort of, if you have the top five of decisions, they, they take sustainability uh, into account as well. Um, I think it's more a matter of if you have two ships performing or two ship owners performing uh, uh, differently, with equal pricing, then they will go for the option that is uh, most environmentally uh, friendly. So a little bit add. So actually, even now we have um, uh, cargo owners who are required um, chartering the ships, requiring the first class rated uh, ships, meaning that uh, prime prime. Uh, ship uh, ship owner uh, cargo owners they, they have a right indeed and they use such uh, things and i think that it's very important that uh, to mention that uh, car cargo owners this the first how to say the drivers for the shipping sector to use the clean ships uh, all us us thinking about the price in the first stage but uh, the second we're going with our uh, is it a green water or it's uh, clean water? But the first look, we are looking just to what's the price for the glass of water. So, uh, meaning that anyway, I, I believe that all depends on the cargo owners. If we charter vessels very high rated, very clean, so that will be future in the in, in Baltic or North Sea. And I, I guess, uh, Mr. Kutka, it's not only the cargo owners, but also the end consumer. So, so, uh, so how, how can you engage the end consumer if, if you have to choose between two equal goods in the supermarket uh, and you don't know about the shipping index? How, 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 how do you manage that? Will you mark the, the products at the end uh, also with, the, with your mark shipping index? Yeah, that, that could be the future, to have uh, full labeling on, on all the projects, uh, products. I think I talked to the, 
supply manager of Nike uh, lately, and he said that within 10 years you will have a CO2 footprint on all the products we consume in Europe on the on the packaging material. And then of course you would see a division shipping road in, in the CO2 there as well. So I think it's going to that direction. Between now and three years, Clean Shipping Index will not be displayed on, on any product. It's really a business to business uh, scheme. Thank you very much. Anything else? Yes, but I, I know from the Danish ship owners that they are not afraid of the competition, but it should be on, on an equal level. So everybody should compete on an equal level, and, and that could be uh, a measure to do that. Yeah.